Hello, today we're continuing our spring devotional series on the book of Acts. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I know I have each day diving into God's word and asking God to speak to us. Today, our focus is on Acts chapter 19. And when we start to look at this section of the book of Acts, it focuses on Paul's third missionary journey. Uh, as many of you know, Paul wrote 13 books in the New Testament. He started churches all over the Middle East, and he's really considered to be one of the most influential leaders of all time. He traveled extensively promoting the message of Jesus Christ. And so as you have, uh, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 19, and let's read that. But as we read it, I don't want you to read it as a history lesson. But over the next few minutes, quietly just invite the Lord to say, God, speak to me. Um, you may be like me. I just need a word from the Lord. And God may speak to some of you with a nudging or maybe a, a gentle prompting. And maybe he's going to give you some insight of what you need to do. Maybe um, there'll be a door that'll be open today and that he is just preparing you for that. He wants you to walk through that door. Or maybe there's a door that's been closed in your life and you've been beating on that door. And the Lord is saying to you, stop doing it. That's the door. I don't want you to go down that path. And so I think it's in devotions like this that if we're opened up to the presence of the Holy Spirit, that God will lead us um, to do that. And so as we look at this, uh, I think there are four things in these verses that God has for us. And so we turn to Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. <clears throat> it's while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. You know, I love it here because Paul made a decision. I'm going to go. Uh, he had been on a previous uh, tour before and he had been here before and he just wanted to revisit and uh, see some of his old friends. And, and God uh, had him on this adventure. And when we think about the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, uh, like I said, there's four things. I think God, the first thing is God wants to give you an opportunity to be a part of an adventure. You know, through the years, I've been on a lot of adventures. Um, I've been snuba diving in Barbados. I've been, I've climbed Dun, Dun River Falls in Jamaica. I've been salmon fishing in Alaska and white water rafting down the Ocoee. And I can list, uh, the list goes on and on. But when I look back over my life, I think the greatest adventure that I've had has not been found in some distant land, but it has been found in serving Christ and His church. There's nothing more adventuresome than being in the middle of what God is doing. There's nothing more exciting than seeing lives changed by the power of God. I love the church. I love Stevens Creek Church. I love seeing lives changed. You know, and together we've been given this opportunity to be a part of an adventure. Um, and I believe that God has something for us and it's even bigger than we imagine. Now, I can go on and talk, and, um, but I need to stay on the devotional, right? Okay, back to this. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road uh, through the interior and arrived at Ephesus and there he found some disciples and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now they answered, no, we hadn't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, and then, well, what baptism did you receive? Now they replied, John's baptism. Paul said, well, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one um, coming after him, that is in Jesus, and on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. There are about 12 men in all here. Now, notice that when uh, Paul asked them, he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we don't even know what you're talking about. You know, they had believed in Jesus, they had followed Jesus, but they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. I think that's really true for a lot of people today. That they know about Jesus, they know about being saved, but they don't realize that God has more for them. And maybe that's you. You don't realize that God has more for you. 
I said there's four things. The second one is this, and this is dealing with the more. I believe that God wants to give you spiritual energy so that you can walk the path that he has for you. This spiritual energy is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in the original Greek is sometimes called the, the parakletos. That's a hard word to translate into English because it means one who is called alongside of. He's a counselor. He's a comforter. He's an encourager. He's an advocate. In fact, Jesus told his disciples, he said, and I will ask the Father, this is John 14 and 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. That Holy Spirit is that advocate. He is the, God's active presence. He lives in us and he comforts us and guides us. He nudges us, whispers to us. But too many of us don't invite or include the Holy Spirit in our lives, and we need to. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, how does that happen? And I say, simply ask Him. Say, God, fill me with your Spirit. And then believe that you received it. You say, well, Marty, if it's so simple, why doesn't everybody operate in God's power? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Here it is. Here's the truth. God cannot fill a vessel that's already full. And to be filled with the Spirit means that we have to surrender every part of our lives to His control. We have to say, God, take me. Mold me. Make me into what you would have me to be. And, and that can be really a painful process. You know why it's so painful? Because I am full of human potential. I am full. And to surrender that potential to God means that I've got to give up control of my life. And y'all, I love to be in control. And some of you do too. Just tonight, you love to be in control. And it pictures itself in you're sitting in your chair with the remote control in your hand. And having that in your hand is just a silent sign or a message to those in the room that you're in control. Well, I'm talking about a little bit deeper than holding on the remote, but Patty will tell you that I have issues. And so I am just using this devotional as a counseling session with that to tell you, yeah, I've got issues, control issues. But here's the deal. I will never experience the true power of God unless I myself become powerless. Paul understood this, and he struggled himself with this. In fact, to the point where the Bible says he even had this thorn in his flesh. Um, but yet he surrendered his life to the Holy Spirit. Let's drop down to the next verse. It says, verse 8 said, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. And they refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left. At this point, he was at the lecture hall of uh, Tyrannius, and he had taught them several hours every day for two years. They received God's word, and they were open to God's spirit. But here's what really happened. Let's drop down to verse 11. I love this. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs, and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and their evil spirits left them. Now let me tell you a story years ago when Patty and I were first dating. After a, a few weeks of dating, Patty came down with hepatitis and, uh, and she had to leave college and go home and uh, I was fasting and praying and during that season and just calling on God, God please, uh, heal her because they, the doctor said that she wouldn't be going back to school and so forth. So I'll never forget one night I heard that there was a, um, right down from campus, they were having a revival service. And I went to that revival service and the pastor, the evangelist said, had these little pieces of cloth. And he read the scripture and he said, if you want healing for somebody else, I want you to come up here. And they anointed a, that piece of cloth and I mailed it to Patty. Do you know that 
she was back at school in two weeks. The, the doctors and the school officials said that she wouldn't be back the rest of the semester, but God touched her. We learned firsthand the power of healing. We learned firsthand the power of Psalm 77 and 14. You are the God who performs miracles and you display your power among the people. God is a miracle working uh, God and he wants to display his power in you. Could it be that you're in the situation that you're in right now? Because this situation is an opportunity for God to reveal his power in your life. You know, God's never going to waste a pain or a problem, but he's going to use them for his glory. And as a result of that, God's going to give you a chance to make things right. I think all of us have made mistakes along the way and that God gives us a chance to, to make things right. In verse 17, we'll drop on down to verse 17. It says, when this became known to the Jews and, Gen and Greeks among Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. And many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. See, the people of Ephesus admitted their mistakes. They were involved in sorcery and witchcraft, and, and they just came clean. They openly confessed their mistakes and, and, and came clean. If you're going to make things right, you've got to come clean. And so today, as we close out this devotional, let me ask you a question. What controls you? Are you controlled by bitterness? Are you controlled by pride or anger? What about alcohol, drugs, internet, pornography, lust? What is it? Is it overspending, overeating? What is it? You will never conquer your giant until you come face to face with him. And to make things right, you have to make a decision to turn your life over to the care of God. You've got to give it over to the Lord. There's so much in Acts chapter 19, and it's hard for me to go through and teach this whole passage in just a matter of minutes. I want you to take some time, read through it, and say, God, speak to me through this word. I believe God's word will change your life. And today I want to close out our devotional just with a time of prayer, and I want to just speak God's word over you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those watching today. Some of them are getting ready for the day. Others uh, have been up sometime. But we're all in different places and we're dealing with different things. I pray, Father, that you would send your spirit <clears throat> and that you would give us the power that we need to accomplish the things that you've asked us to do. God, give us the power. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. God, get the junk out of my life. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. I pray, Father, that, uh, that as we go through this day, we would start to sense your activity and your work, and we would start to see you working in our lives. We surrender this day to you. We give it to you, and we declare that nobody but Jesus is going to run my life today. Say that. Say, nobody but Jesus is going to run my life. I declare the name of the Lord is going to go before you today and that no weapon formed against you will prosper today. I declare that you will be the head and not the tail, that you will be victorious. And we declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you real soon.